more when among them than when in anticipation. The Southern Rebellion was largely the outgrowth of the Mexican War. Nations like individuals are punished for their transgressions. We got our punishment in the most sanguinary and expensive war of modern times. It is probably well that we had the war when we did. We are better off now than we would have been without it, and have made more rapid progress than we otherwise should have made. Now our Republic has shown itself capable of dealing with one of the greatest wars ever made, and our people have proven themselves to be the most formidable in war of any nationality. But this war was a fearful lesson, as it teaches the necessity of avoiding wars in the future. I know only two tunes. One of them is Yankee Doodle. The other isn't. Ah, uh, you know my weaknesses. My children and my horses. Look after our dear children and direct them in the paths of rectitude. With these few injunctions and the knowledge I have of your love and affection and the dutiful affection of all our children, I bid you a final farewell. Until we meet in another, and I trust, better world. You will find this on my person after my demise. It was my fortune, or misfortune, to be called to the office of chief executive without any previous political training. The will of the people is the best law. I have acted in every instance from a conscientious desire to do what was right, constitutional, within the law, and for the very best interests of the whole people. Failures have been errors of judgment, not of intent. Leave the matter of religion to the family altar, the church, and the private school, supported entirely by private contributions. Keep the church and state forever separate. I know no method to secure the repeal of bad or obnoxious laws so effective as their stringent execution. Labor disgraces no man. Unfortunately, you occasionally find men who disgrace labor. The friend in my adversity I shall always cherish most. I can better trust those who help to relieve the gloom of my dark hours than those who are so ready to enjoy with me the sunshine of my prosperity. I have made it a rule of my life to trust a man long after other people gave him up. But I don't see how I can ever trust any human being again. Every human being, of whatever origin, of whatever station, deserves respect. We must each respect others, even as we respect ourselves. I am not aware of ever having used a profane expletive in my life. The right to revolution is an inherent one. When people are oppressed by their government, it is a natural right they enjoy to relieve themselves of oppression. If they are strong enough, whether by withdrawal from it or by overthrowing it, and substituting a government more acceptable. Although a soldier by profession, I have never felt any sort of fondness for war, and I have never advocated it, except as a means of peace. The art of war is simple enough. Find out where your enemy is. Get at him as soon as you can. Strike him as hard as you can. And keep moving on. It has been my misfortune to be engaged in more battles than any other general on the other side of the Atlantic. But there was never a time during my command when I would not have chosen some settlement by reason rather than the sword. I appreciate the fact, and am proud of it, that the attentions I am receiving are intended more for our country than for me personally. I never held a council of war in my life. I heard what men had to say, the stream of talk at headquarters, but I made up my own mind, and from my written orders, my staff got their first knowledge of what was to be done. No living man knew of plans until they matured and decided. I propose to fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. There was never a time when, in my opinion, some way could not be found to prevent the drawing of a sword. In every battle, there comes a time when both sides consider themselves beaten, and he who continues the attack wins. Oh,